Hello. <clears throat> Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, this is Helen with ADU1, and it is uh, Wednesday, December 1st. So happy December. Um, it's crazy. It's already December, almost the end of the year. But thank you again for joining us for our weekly webinars, especially we've been doing the um, City Spotlight series. So if you're new and um, haven't joined in, we started doing uh, City Spotlights every week. Um, it's okay even if this is not the area where your buildings are or where you want the ADUs. Usually the, the rules across the cities are generally the same as they all um, uh, are from the, the state ordinance or the state law anyways. So um, even if Lawndale, which is what we're doing today, is not your um, city, you can still um, check it out and uh, most likely the, the rules pertain to you. So alrighty. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to um, put it into the chat. And let's see, so now we will begin. And again, I'm going to take it directly from the city website. So that way, if you look up these rules, um, you will be able to know the exactly kind of what we were talking about and anything in the future. So today's city spotlight is for Lawndale. Um, again, it will cover all of the, the general rules for both single family and multifamily ADUs. Um, even if this is not the, the city where your property is in, most likely all the rules still apply to you as they're all generally the same um, regardless. So uh, here is Lawndale's uh, municipal code that was created, I believe, last year. Um, let's see. And there was a supplement actually very recently in September, as it says. So that's really nice. I like it when they continuously update them. So we always know that the city is um, on top of it with their uh, rules. So all right. Okay, so let's see, we can skip um, this part. I'm really only gonna go through kind of the main ones that will be um, of concern. You uh, will need you know, new or separate utility connections. That is both for single family and multifamily. You're allowed to do that as long as um, there is a residential property on the lot. Let's see. All right, so it's basically saying, um, I'm up here at like number one and two, the same rules apply. You can do attached or detached ADUs. Um, of course, as long as there's already a residential property um, on the lot. Let's see. For attached, um, for single family homes, uh, attached means either a conversion of a space that's already part of the home, like an attached garage, or for single family, you can do um, new construction that is attached to the home. For um, multifamily, you know, we'll get into multifamily once we're there. So it does say located within the proposed or existing dwelling, such as an attached garage, um, attached storage, if there's such thing. Or you can be um, in an accessory structure, you know, like another uh, storage or garage, um, basically, or it can be detached. For single family homes, number three says no more than one. So you're only allowed to do um, one ADU for single family homes, either attached or detached. I'll get into the exception a little later. When doing an attached ADU um, for single family homes, there is a 50% uh, living space requirement. So if you are converting a garage or building new construction and attaching it to the home, you are limited to 50% of the existing square footage. So if, a, if you have a 2,000 square foot home, you can um, do a 1,000 square foot uh, ADU. If you're converting a garage, you most likely don't have to worry about that unless you have a smaller um, home, like maybe if it's, you know, 1,000 or 1,200 square feet. Um, but the most, you know, a standard double car garage is usually 350 to 450 square feet. So you should be fine. 
And then let's see, they have a max um, in Lawndale, 850 square feet um, for a one bedroom unit and 1000 square feet um, is their maximum. So I know some cities, this may be where, where it's different. Some cities allow 1200, um, but actually I've been seeing more often than not a 1000 square foot rule. Same for um, detached ADUs for single family properties. Maximum is 1,000 square feet. Mm, you don't have to worry about six or seven really. We'll take care of all of those. Number eight, the setbacks. If you are converting a space, you do not have to worry about setbacks. If you're converting a garage and it's on the property line and it's a legally permitted garage, you don't have to worry about it. You can just convert as is. New construction, however, um, I'm assuming Lawndale is the same. I'll double check. There's always a four feet uh, setback rule for side and rear. And I believe here, yeah, so no setbacks required um, when you are converting. So if you're using existing space and um, a setback of four feet from side and rear um, required, yeah, for something not converted, meaning uh, new construction. So let me see. Yeah, so for new construction and any new structure, because we're in the same location. Okay, this is interesting. It's it's saying um, they are requiring four feet from side and rear. If you were to, um, this case, it says any new construct new structure constructed in the same location and to the same dimension. dimension. So if you were to demo um, an existing garage, apparently they are requiring you. This is kind of the first I've seen of this. Four feet. Um, which is kind of weird because how would you build it <clears throat> to the same dimensions and exact same location if they're requiring the four feet? Um, I mean, the, the ordinance is saying this is the first time I've seen a city um, say that you have to conform to setbacks, um, e even if you demo the existing structure and then rebuild. Um, circumstances like that are if, you know, the structure is just in really bad shape, you can't really salvage or preserve anything, and you just want to tear it down and build something new and sturdy anyways, rather than completely reinforce it, which would end up being the same price. So in those um, circumstances, I guess Lawndale is saying that you do have to um, conform to, to setbacks. Or you know what, maybe they're not, actually. they It, it may be under, um, as long as it's not converted from an existing structure and new construction. Sometimes when they're a little ambiguous, so we'll double check, but hopefully um, this is part of the, the exception for them. Um, so it may hopefully just be for brand new construction because I've never seen anybody require it to be built in the same um, dimensions. It contradicts itself. So it should be under here, but we'll always double check for you anyways. But rule of thumb, new construction does have to conform to four foot setbacks, um, but conversions and hopefully in this case, um, even if you're demo and re rebuilding to the same spot, this should be under that ex exception of not. ADU shall comply with lock coverage and open space requirements, um, which is uh, no problem. We'll always calculate calculate that um, there is always the exception of an ADU that's at least 800 square feet that even if you are uh, over the lot coverage requirement or open space requirement, there's um, a California exemption ADU of one ADU detached 800 square feet that you are um, in most cases allowed to do. So you would still um, be permitted to do that ADU 800 square feet, even if you don't meet the lot coverage and open space requirements. And again, we will we'll do all those calculations for you as part of the plans. Fire sprinklers are not required if they're not required for the primary residence. And architecturally, we will make it compatible with um, the rest of the or the main house. Height limit six feet, which is interesting. Um, because usually for single family homes, the city defers to the zoning. Um, but in this case, they're capping it at 16 feet all around. Um, number 13, A through E, this is about parking. Um, basically, you can summarize this by if your home is within a half mile to public transit, like a bus stop, you don't need to add any uh, parking. That's usually the one that applies to pretty much every single home, unless um, you are in a more rural area that isn't within a half mile. 
But if you meet any of these other um, exceptions, then you don't have to add parking. If um, you did have to add parking, typically for single family homes, even a tandem spot on the driveway is acceptable. So um, for single family homes, it's usually not a problem at all. And if you are converting a garage or a carport or any covered um, parking structure, you don't have to replace those uh, parking spots. So let me see. So that I seem like it sums it up for uh, single family homes. The general rules too, this is for everybody, you can't sell your ADU separately. And um, I have yet to see any city that will allow short-term rentals. So you technically can't do an ADU for like Airbnb purposes or anything like that. Um, they usually always have to have at least 30 or 31 day uh, minimum for, for rents. And um, I believe you have to enter into a covenant um, at when you're permitting the, the unit that you won't um, rent it for less. Yeah, this one does say it won't be rented for a period of less than 30 days. Let's see, we will take care of this. There is usually, again, a building separation requirement along with the setbacks. Um, the general rule of, rule of thumb is six feet. For Lawndale, they are deferring to um, the zone. Let me see. And I guess for them, they're saying in R1, there's a 20 foot uh, building separation. That is one of the highest ones I have ever seen, um, especially for single family homes. It's usually six feet. However, you are um, in um, an exception. Again, if that would prohibit you from, from doing an 800 square foot detached ADU, then you can, I guess, encroach into that 20 feet. Um, however, if you want to be larger, if you want to do that maximum 1,000 square feet, I guess they are requiring 20 feet building separation. That's that's a lot. <laughs> Again, I've never seen that before, but they're saying that that's it for um, R1. But we would be able to measure and, and tell you kind of what the max you can do. And at least you are protected to at least do an 800 square foot um, ADU. So let's see. Okay, the junior ADU. So this was the exception to my earlier rule of um, single family homes can only do one um, ADU. You can technically do two. Uh, the second one would be called a junior ADU. And um, the junior ADUs are permitted as long as the owner lives in either the main home or the junior ADU. And the junior ADU is also limited to 500 square feet. And it must be uh, part of the existing structure. So it has to be a conversion. It can't be new um, construction. So you can do an attached garage. So you can technically convert um, an attached garage and still have an ADU. You are again maxed out at 500 um, square feet. And let's see what else Lawndale has to say. Um, of course, exterior access. So the junior ADU, again, 500 square feet, has to have its own um, exterior entryway and it has to have a kitchen. Uh, most cities say that um, it does not have to have its own bathroom. It can technically share a bathroom with the house. Um, but if you wanted to um, uh, have it just have its own complete um, independent facilities, you should you should add a bathroom, but you don't have to legally. Let's, yeah, you can combine it. So you can do the ADU, um, a detached ADU and the junior ADU. And it looks like if you are doing a junior ADU and a regular ADU, your ADU is capped at 800 square feet. So you can't go to the um, 1000 and you still have that height limit of 16 feet. All right, so the second part now is for multifamily ADUs, which I'm, um, you know, slightly going to assume that it matches all other areas. So for multifamily buildings, which are duplexes and up, whether you have four units, five, 10, 50, 75 units, um, you are allowed to do um, attached and detached as well. However, in multifamily uh, ADU worlds and links, go and language only refers to conversions. You are not allowed to change, manipulate, extend, expand uh, your main structure, your main building. So if you have a duplex or a fourplex, you can't change that structure. You can't do new construction and add to it. You can't expand a room. 
Um, you can only convert what's existing, such as tuck under parking, garages, storage rooms, passageways, basements, um, stuff like that. And you are allowed um, at least one. So if you have a duplex with like an attached garage, you can convert that garage. If you have a fourplex with tuck under parking, you can do one in that tuck under parking. Um, so for attached, you can do at least one um, and up to 25% of your existing number of units. That kicks in from eight units and up. So if you have two units to seven units, you can do one under the 25% or at least one. Um, if you have eight, nine, 10, 11 units, then you can do two. So just do 25% um, rule and you have to round down. So if you have an, um, an eight unit building, you can, with tuck under parking, you can split that into two units um, and so forth. If you have 12, um, you could do three units and so forth. You, want, you can also do in, in multifamily properties. So not only are you more um, than single family, in Lawndale, luckily, it looks like you can also do um, not more than two ADUs um, that are detached. The reason I kind of just said that hesitantly was because some cities require you to um, pick which configuration, so either or. In this case, I don't see any language that says either or. Um, number three here says that um, you can do the, the attach, the 25%. And then it also says not more than two. So you can do up to two detached ADUs and um, you are limited to still 16 feet, which most likely in this case, if they don't allow um, us to go below grade, then you would be limited to one story. If we are able to engineer it um, a couple feet below grade, then we could fit two, um, two stories there. And of course we do still have to abide by the four foot side and rear setbacks. And I believe that is, yeah, that's all. Again, fire sprinkler is not required um, unless it's required for the primary residence. However, I will say something that we are kind of experiencing now that um, the first big wave, you know, I'm going to um, end this. So that's pretty much it for Lawndale. Multifamily, 25% attached, up to two detached. And looks like you can do um, both together. And let's see. And then for a uh, single family, um, basically the up to one, um, unless the owner lives in the junior or the um, main house, then you can also do the junior ADU. So something I want to um, touch on for fire sprinklers. So of course, you know, in 2020, when this when the state law allowed uh, the ADUs, they just kind of flooded everybody. Um, you're allowed to do this, green light. All these cities have these, um, I don't know if, it's, if quota is a right word to use, but many cities have a certain amount of um, units, some of them up in the tens of thousands that they have to add by a certain date. So, you know, it's pretty much allowed, state ordinance, um, or state law, everything like that. But something now that we're, we're seeing, now that this has become a reality and it's like physically happening, um, a lot of other, I guess, entities are, are getting involved. You don't have to worry too much. We handle all of this, but something that we have been seeing, um, one, one area, for example, coastal areas are, um, giving some pushback when it comes to parking. They don't want you to take, um, away garage or carport and have that be protected. So the, the language, I guess, from the state law and the coastal commission's um, rules are, you know, we don't know which one supersedes the other. And I mean, we're not really going to fight the the city when um, this is their law and the cities do have some, some wiggle room. We will, of course, fight for you if we know it's um, black and white, you are able to do like that state exemption ADU, for example, and, um, and it's okay. However, if it does start to enter, you know, safety issues and stuff like that, we, we do have to keep that in mind. So that's something that we've been noticing. The Coastal Commission, some areas, depending on where you are, um, Venice, for example, is one of them that may not allow you to take away parking without replacing it. Another thing we've noticed, although that 25% rule for multifamily properties may allow you to do, let's say you have a um, a huge, you know, 80, 80 unit building, and you can do tons of um, ADUs. 
it may trigger something for fire sprinklers. Even if your uh, main building does not need fire sprinklers, if um, if your original building was maybe like already on the the cusp of needing it, or now they're concerned about you know occupancy levels and density for that building, they may come back and require it. So the more we're we're learning about this now because it's really coming into play. Um, we will discuss that for you if you are working with the, you know, the ability to do tons of, of ADUs or lots of conversions or something like that. Um, but again, you don't have to worry about it. I don't want to, to, to worry or scare anybody. It's just something now that we've been seeing now that um, we have, um, especially for multifamily buildings, um, you know, lots of projects in construction, tons in, in plan check, and we're working with so many cities. This is the type of feedback we're getting for, you know, this brand new uh, law affecting multifamily properties. Um, in LA, at least, it's been pretty smooth. Um, I know a lot of uh, areas, I mean, Lawndale is actually really positive with, with ADUs. They want to increase um, uh, the amount of, um, you know, their population and renters and stuff like that. So they were actually really excited. There's a few articles online about Lawndale with their appreciation for the ADUs. And again, when we are doing the, um, plans for you, we're going to go over all of that stuff. Um, anyways, so, um, that's just something kind of to, to know, but we'll always let you know, uh, those things ahead of time. And, um, our firm, um, we're a design and build firm, so we do all of the engineering, um, architectural design, all of that. We we do that with you. We work on the design and the layout until you um, are happy. Then we work on the full set. We do the submission to the city. We work with the city, the back and forth, um, everything needed. If you are worried about um, utility poles and stuff like that, we take care of those encroachment clearance applications as well. Um, to see what your utility company will require. So we handle all of that. If you are building like a two-story large structure and there's um, wires or something like that. So we we help with all of those steps. And then of course, the full scope construction and we include your finishes, fixtures, lighting, floors, doors, windows, cabinets, countertops, sinks, stuff like that. And um, I was just on the, on the phone with a potential customer and I let him know, which I'll let everyone know too. Most things are up for negotiation. If you want, you know, the most in inclusive package ever to just save yourself headaches, we can work with you on that. If there's certain things you do want included or not included, we're flexible and we can work with you to get um, a package that you're comfortable with that can hopefully take away um, a few headaches that you don't want to don't want to deal with. So um, I will put my um, contact info in the chat in case you have any future questions. Um, if you have any questions now, feel free to um, to put them in, or you can call the um, you can call our office as well. And let me see here. Oops, that's supposed to say ADU one. I'll just type it again. So one eight six six new ADU one, um, or you can email me, make sure you put the dash ADU dash one if you have any other questions. So feel free if you need to know kind of how many ADUs your property can put, um, any limitations, uh, you know, what's the maximum um, kind of rental income you could get. We'll help you with all of that just to see how you can maximize uh, your monthly income and just what kind of the best uh, ADU um, feasibility you can do for your property. So give us a call or email me and we're we're happy to help. Um, that's all for, for today for Lawndale. Please check out our other videos. Um, I know we've done one on uh, Long Beach and um, another city that escapes me right now, but it's on there. And of course, all of the general um, state guidelines are for all my other videos. And we have a bunch of SB9 and SB10 videos um, as well. And um, as well as uh, balcony inspections that we are also doing for multifamily properties, which is required for three or more uh, units. So give us a call, email, and uh, we're happy to, to help you. Until next time, um, happy holidays and thanks for 